Good morning, Church of the Cross. It's great to be with you on this Palm Sunday. And as is tradition, we're going to start with the hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. And this is a new arrangement of the hymn. David's royal son, who in the Lord's name comes, the King and Blessed One, the company of angels is praising me on high, and with the church family. Today is Palm Sunday. We'll be gathering this afternoon at Redeemer Presbyterian for our Palm Sunday processional and the reading of the Passion Narrative and the Eucharist. But before then, we wanted to kind of create a small kind of like drop of worship this morning, this Sunday morning for you to enjoy and be blessed by. So today being Palm Sunday is the starting point of Holy Week. We've been tracking with Jesus over the past weeks in the season of Lent. And we've arrived now at this momentous kind of seven-day period. And in these days, we track in real time with Jesus as he approaches and passes through the cross and through to Easter resurrection. And the services that we'll mark out this week are among the most beautiful and profound in the whole of the Christian year. So buckle up and be ready for that. Uh, This morning, I wanted to read one of the readings appointed for today and just offer a short reflection and prayer um, before we go and finish up. So here it is. It's Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. I'm sure that many of you will be very familiar with this. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, 
and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The trajectory of Holy Week is mapped out in the passage that we just heard from Paul's letter to the Philippians. You got the sense of the ark, I'm sure. First it's down, down, and down into obedience, into humanity, into suffering, and into death. Before the ascent and resurrection glory on Easter Sunday, there's this downward trajectory. Paul's basic idea is that Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, was downwardly mobile. He moved into suffering and death. And so we, as his followers, are to have the same mindset, the same posture, especially with regard to one another and our relationships. It's a word of exhortation. But this year, we are all perhaps better acquainted with suffering and death, with the suffering and death that are a part of this week's arc. Some of us painfully so, lost loved ones, suffering physically, suffering economically, lonely, cut off in various ways. There is remarkable solace, I think, in recognizing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God from God, experienced in real time with a body like your own, like my own, these realities, these difficulties. He knows what we experience. He's able to empathize. He knows our suffering. But what is perhaps most remarkable about Jesus and about this week is that all that he endures is not incidental or accidental. It's not simply a result of his humanity. Rather, Paul describes Jesus suffering and death in terms of obedience. You see, in obedience to God the Father, Jesus suffers and dies. He dies on the cross. Out of perfect obedience and on our behalf, Jesus chooses this downward trajectory. As we will move later on this week through Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, we're not simply marking out this idea that God knows and identifies with our feelings of abandonment or loneliness, with our physical sufferings and the experiences of grief and death, though those things are all true. What we're marking out is greater than that, though, is that these realities and their root cause, sin, separation from God, have been undone. By Jesus' obedience to the Father unto death, these realities no longer have the same hold over life. Things have changed. More than just identifying with us and our sufferings, our frailty, our shame, this week we declare that Jesus has done something about them. In his obedience, he has changed things. The simple idea is that in his death and in his resurrection, the realities of sin, evil, and death, though still all too present in our world and in our lives, have been changed have been defeated. Like no one else, we mark this week, Jesus has changed things. That he has changed things, that he does change things, is why we call out to him today, Palm Sunday, Hosanna. Come, save us. Save us. This is why we call out this way, because he changes things, because he affects real change in reality. This is why that he, can, that he changes things is why we can welcome his reign and rule in our lives. It's why we take him at his word and embrace him this week as Savior and Lord, perhaps again or for the first time. So this Holy Week, I want to encourage you to participate in whatever way you can in our corporate life in worship. So whether it's on person, in person, or worshiping online, Let's give Jesus the worship that he is due for all that he's done and is doing. But more than asking you to do something, you to participate, I want to encourage you to make the cry of Palm Sunday, Hosanna, your own. In this difficult season, in the challenges of your life, as you follow Jesus in downward mobility, make that call, that cry out to Jesus, your own, and use it to lay hold of him, the one who has changed things, the one who does change things. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's respond with this hymn of praise. All hail the power of Jesus' name. And 
Let angels prostrate fall Bring forth the royal diadem And crown him Lord of all Bring forth the royal diadem And crown Hail him who sees you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who sees you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Let's pray. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, in your tender love for us, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and come to share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now would you receive this blessing. With the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of him and of his Son, our Savior. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you now and always. Go in peace. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you this afternoon.